Hey guys, this is the first time I'm showing up in our videos. Many people told me that this will increase our engagement. Let's see how it works. My name is Parag and welcome back to our new video. So few months back, I started a poll that on which particular topic my next video should be. And the silicon carbon MOSFET topic won the poll. Don't worry, I'll also post new videos on IGBTs as well. But this time, we are going to look into silicon carbide MOSFET. As the name suggests, the silicon carbide is made up of semiconductors like silicon and carbon. Now, this is the structure of a silicon carbide MOSFET and silicon MOSFET. There are three main features or we can say benefits of the silicon carbide components. It has better dielectric breakdown field intensity, it has more band gap than silicon based devices and it has better heat conductivity. Because of these benefits, silicon carbide devices can be used in high power applications easily with minimum switching losses and conduction losses. Let's see how it works. When we see the structure of a MOSFET, it is made up of N plus, N minus and P substrates. We'll not go deeper into this. Now when we use power MOSFETs, we always have a requirement of high drain to source breakdown voltage because of the obvious reason to use it in a high voltage applications. So to achieve that, we need to increase the gap between silicon substrate and P region of the MOSFET. This gap is known as the drift layer. And this phenomenon is known as the critical breakdown strength. This strain changes as per material used in the MOSFET. So when we need higher breakdown voltage of a MOSFET, we'll increase this band gap. But there is a downside to this. As we increase the band gap, the resistance between them also increases. And we call this resistance as on-state drain to source resistance, aka RDS on. So the more breakdown voltage a MOSFET has, the more will be its RDS on. Well, that is where a silicon carbon MOSFET stands out. Its critical breakdown strength is 10 times more than the silicon structure. Let's take an example of the breakdown voltage of 650 volts. So the silicon MOSFET and silicon carbon MOSFET. If the breakdown voltage of the silicon MOSFET is 650 volts, then it will need this much of space. And for silicon carbon MOSFET, it will need only this much space. So its size and RDS on would be less than silicon based MOSFET. High breakdown voltage power devices can be made with silicon carbide impurity concentration, which has a thinner thickness. Therefore, the silicon carbide can have high breakdown voltage with low RDS on per unit area. Now let's see the other scenario. When the current flows to a device, in that case, there is a possibility that the temperature across it will increase. The flow of current is nothing but the flow of electrons. So the electrons present in the MOSFET get excited. So they try to flow from valence band to conduction band traveling through the band gap. Because of that, the leakage current in the device increases as temperature increases. We have seen this term while understanding everything about the MOSFET in our previous videos. Due to this factor, the operating temperature of the silicon based MOSFET is limited. But the gap between this valence band and conduction band of the silicon carbon MOSFET is three times bigger than the silicon MOSFETs. So it prevents the flow of leakage current from valence band to conduction band at higher temperatures. So silicon carbon MOSFETs tend to have less leakage current during this phase, which makes it more useful in high temperature range. Silicon carbon MOSFETs also have higher heat conductivity. So their heat dissipation is better than that of silicon based MOSFETs. Some silicon carbon MOSFETs have four terminals. The two are basic drain and gate, but it has two source terminals such as driver source and power source. As the name suggests, the driver source is a reference terminal for driving circuitry. 
If the gate driver is referenced to the same ground that receives the load current, then parasitic inductance present in the current path also will come into picture which lead to a bad switching feedback. You must be wondering, if the breakdown voltage and RDS on is the case, then why just we can't use the IGBTs, right? And there is no problem of RDS on also. But there is a catch to it. Although the silicon based IGBTs have high breakdown voltage, they suffer from large switching loss at very high frequency. So we have to limit its frequency, which lead to using bigger passive components like capacitors and inductors for power converters. Due to higher switching loss, it dissipates more heat and need bigger heat sinks as well. But in contrast, the silicon devices achieve high breakdown voltage with the majority of carrier devices such as short kit art, which are higher speed devices structures. Therefore, silicon carbon MOSFET works like a charm at higher frequencies. So we get high breakdown voltage with lower switching losses plus lower conduction losses as well which reduces the size of the passive components and heat sinks. So all three features such as high breakdown voltage, low RDS on and high speed switching can be achieved all together. Let's compare the silicon carbon MOSFET with the silicon MOSFET of same package. There are two MOSFETs. The one is silicon based MOSFET and other is silicon carbon MOSFET. So when we see the data sheet, the drain current of the silicon MOSFET is around 13.8 amperes. And if we go with the silicon carbon MOSFET, its drain current will be around 13 amperes. But when we see the drain to source breakdown voltage, the silicon MOSFET has only 650 volts. And the silicon carbon MOSFET has a breakdown voltage of 1200 volts. And when we see the RDS on, the silicon MOSFET has 280 milliohms. And if we go with the silicon carbon MOSFET, even though its breakdown voltage is around twice, its RDS on is only 220 milliohms. There is one more factor, the input capacitance. The input capacitance of this silicon MOSFET is around 1200 picofarad. And the input capacitance of this silicon carbon MOSFET is around 290 picofarads. So this parameter determines the switching speed of the MOSFET. So if the input capacitance of this MOSFET is high, it will take more time to charge and discharge its capacitance. So eventually it will take more time to turn on and turn off. So in that case, the silicon carbon MOSFET will have less switching losses at higher switching frequency. Well, that's all about the silicon carbon MOSFET. Maybe next time we'll see IGBTs and more about gallium nitride MOSFETs as well. I hope you like my videos. I talk all about basic power electronic concepts, embedded systems, and everything related to hardware electronics. Please like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and finally, thank you so much for watching.